Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim Ekshaw and I'm the owner of Ekshaw Knits. I am an aspiring knitwear designer and indie yarn dyer. In today's tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to knit the Claudia Pullover. It's a knitting, pa knitting pattern that's available on my website, so you can go check that out. I'll leave links. And also I'll, I'll um, put in some video or put in some maybe b-roll or photos of the Claudia pattern so you know what I'm looking or talking about. So in order to start this um, pattern what you're going to need is two different colors and in today's video I'm going to be using chestnut and Appaloosa. These are DK weight super wash merino yarns that are also available on my website. So um, this will be the main body and then this will be the Appaloosa will be the stripes on um, in the pattern. So um, we're going to start with the supplies that you need and you're going to need three different size needles. This is a four millimeter and you will need that for the main um, to knit the main portion of the body. Then you're going to also need a four millimeter for the neck or collar. And then we're also gonna use a 3.5 millimeter for the ribbing on the hem and on the cuffs. So I'm gonna put those aside. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, tapestry needle, and then of course your stitch markers. So the stitch markers, I like to use five of them. So we're going to use um, I'm just going to move things out of the way here. We're going to use a stitch marker for each one of the raglan increases and also one for where we joined um, in the round. So uh, the pattern starts out with working the back. So I'm going to turn this around. I'll show you. So in the pattern, um, I've got, we're going to work flat back and forth row to row. And then we join in the round and then we're going to do our raglan increases. So this pattern is for a confident beginner. It is easy, straightforward, and actually a really enjoyable knit. I love knitting this. It's one of my favorite patterns. And um, so yeah, so anyway, I am making a version of it here um, for a friend's little girl. So I've done a little bit something different here. This is called mosaic knitting. It's slip stitch knitting. And I've done a, a little design on hers. But what I wanted to show you was um, the raglan increases. I hope I have that on video and you can see all of it. Um, so we do a raglan increase and knit front and back. Um, you can see the lines and this will, we will, this one has already been split for the sleeves and we put the sleeves on hold so you will also need like a cord. I've just used like, <laughs> I've used um, some extra knitting cords that I had, but you could also use waste yarn as well. So I just wanted to show you like where we're starting. So let's get into the tutorial. All right, so let's start with our cast on. Now the cast on number is gonna be different for everyone because we're all making different sizes. So I'm not gonna discuss discuss um, cast on or stitch numbers or anything like that. Um, but we're going to do a long tail cast on. And the best way to estimate how much, um, how many, how much length you're going to need in yarn for your cast on is I take what I think would be like 40 stitches and so that's my cast on number is 40 st stitches how much yarn I would need for 40 stitches and then I times that by three and then I can start the long tail cast on so All right, so for this setup row, after we've done our cast on stitches, for the setup row in this particular pattern, I'm going to place my markers after two, six, 24, six, and two. So again, that'll be different for everyone, but we're gonna purl this first row. So that is going to count as our setup row. So I'm gonna start by purling 
my two stitches and then placing a marker. And I apologize for the bird in the background. <laughs> That's our pineapple conure that feels the need to like talk while I'm doing videos. It's like he wants to be a part of it. Okay, so I'm gonna place my marker after two and then I'm going to do six. Oh, I got a fuzz, sorry. So we're gonna purl six. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. And then we're gonna place another marker. And then we're gonna purl 24 it calls. So I'm gonna purl 26 and then place another marker. So there we go. We have marked our raglan increases and we're ready to continue. So we're gonna flip it around and then we're going to start with our raglan increases for this first knit row. This is right side now. I'm gonna need a little bit more yarn. And this is how you do the raglan increases. So we're going to knit one and again, this number will be different depending on what size you're making. So, and then we're going to do a front, a knit front and back for our raglan increases. So the stitch before and the stitch after our stitch marker is what we're going to be increasing. Okay, so knit front, knit back in the same stitch, and then slip the marker, knit front, knit back in the same stitch and slip it. And then we're gonna knit up to one stitch before our next marker. All right, we're there. So we're gonna knit front, oops, knit back, slip the marker, knit front, knit back, and knit up to one stitch before our next marker. One stitch before our marker, so we're gonna knit front, knit back, slip the marker, knit front, knit back, and keep on going. So we knit front and back for every one of our raglan increases. That is the style of this particular pattern. It's all different kinds of ways to do raglan increases but for a beginner i find that this is just really enjoyable and quick to do all right that is our first row of raglan increases now our pattern calls for um just purl this row so that's what we're gonna do i'm going to pause the video and i'm gonna purl this row and we will show you another raglan increase all right, so after I was done that purl row, we're just gonna continue with the pattern. And in the pattern that I, or the size that I am fa following, it says rows three to eight, repeat rows one and two. So you're just gonna repeat what you did in row one and row two. So in those rows, what I did was a raglan, uh, increase at each raglan marker, and then I'm gonna purl the wrong side row. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna knit up up to the first stitch before our marker and we're gonna knit front knit back in the same stitch just like we did before slip that marker knit front knit back and we're just gonna continue in that fashion until we get done our uh, right up until row nine so meet me back there for that 
All right, so I've gone ahead and I've done some additional rows with my increases that the pattern calls for. And depending on the size that you are making, you might find that you also, that it also asks you to do an increase at the beginning and the end of the row. So I'm gonna quickly show you that as well. It also, depending on the size that you're making, you may be also um, asked to do an increase on the wrong side or the purl side of the work. And in that case, what you would do is just purl front and back, right? So where I'm gonna show you how to do the increase for the beginning of the row and the end of the row. So what you're gonna do is um, do a knitted increase. So you're gonna put your needle in, wrap it around, bring it around, and instead of pulling that stitch off, you're gonna bring it up and put it on your needle. So that is an increase for the beginning of the row. So when you get to the end of the row, you're going to flip it or turn it and do your increase um, at the beginning of the row at that end. I'll show you what I mean. So we've done our increase for the beginning of the row, and we're just gonna go ahead and start knitting. So again, when we get to the raglan increase, it does ask for a raglan increase rather. So we're gonna also do that as well. So we're gonna knit up to that stitch just before the raglan increase and knit front and back. Slip the marker, knit front and back. And we're just gonna continue this way into the end of the row. And then I'm gonna show you how to do an increase at the end of your row. All right, so we're coming up to the last raglan increase. So. We're gonna knit front and back for the stitch just before the stitch marker. We're gonna slip that marker, knit front and back. That's our last raglan increase, and then we're gonna increase one stitch at the end of the row. So we're gonna get to the very end here, and then you're just gonna turn your work like so, and you're gonna increase a stitch that's the way I like to do it anyway. I'm sure there's a million other different other ways, but this is how I do it. All right, so we have completed row nine and I've done the increase on the beginning, sorry, the beginning of the row and the end of the row. And it also did the increases for the raglan. So depending on the pattern that you're making, it might ask you to do an increase on the wrong side or the purl side. And like I said, you would just do a purl front and back when you get to your raglan increases and that's it that's we're going to continue knitting flat until the pattern tells us to join in the round and i will show you how to join in the round as well all right so we've gotten to the part of the pattern where it tells us to join in the round and we've already did our increases for the last the last row there and it, again, it'll be different for the different sizes, um, but my increases were five stitches on the, the beginning and the end of the row. So um, I, wanna, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna count my stitches and make sure that I have the right amount in each section of our um, raglan increases. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an extra stitch. This is just a preference that I like to do. It is not something that it's included in the pattern, um, but I like to add that extra stitch. And that's how I'm going to join for working in the round. You don't have to do that. You can just join in the round, but it's just something that I like to do. So the working yarn, like I said, is on the wrong side. So we're gonna flip our work. So it's the wrong side facing. And now we're going to join for working in the round. So I'm going to, uh, actually I'm gonna purl this first stitch cause it's on the wrong side. I'm gonna tighten it a little bit. And because I added that extra stitch, I'm going to slip um, the first stitch on the left or the right side over that, that stitch that cre we created. And there we go. Now we've deleted that first stitch and we've joined in the round. So now we're going to flip back because we have to be working on the right side. And um, now we can start working in the round. So I'm gonna place my marker, move everything up, and we're going to start um, the first uh, round. And in this round, in the 
the size that I'm making, it calls for a raglan increase, so we're gonna do our raglan increases for this first round. Just gonna start knitting all the way around. We're gonna knit right up to the stitch before the raglan increase, remember? And then we're gonna knit front and back. Okay, we have one more stitch. And now we're gonna we're gonna do our knit front and back, like so. Slip the marker. I'm all fumbly today. <laughs> and then knit front and back again. And you're just gonna continue that all the way around and that'll be your first um, working in the round. All right, so we are at the point where the pattern tells us that we have to separate for the sleeves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna knit up to our first raglan um, stitch marker. So we're gonna knit across right up to that next marker. So now that we've reached that marker, we're going to remove that marker and we're going to cast on um, a set number of stitches. So whatever your um, size tells you and it's going to be a backwards. I always find this difficult. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that's one. And then we're going to place a marker in the center of the stitches that we're, I'm, sti I'm casting on four stitches. So you place a new marker in between uh, the, the exact half of those cast on stitches. So I'm going to cast on another two. Oh my goodness. One. Okay, so now I have my four cast on. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna pull my needle up a little bit. And we're gonna take our waist yarn and a tapestry needle. And we're gonna place those stitches in between those raglan markers on a piece of waist yarn. So we're going to insert our tapestry needle um, as if we were going to purl. I hope you can see that in the video. The sun decided to come out, so. So we're just gonna continue doing that all the way to the next marker. For some reason, I'm so fumbly on video. I think it's like nerves, but <laughs> I'll get better. Okay, so we're gonna keep on. And the reason we're doing this is because we won't be working the um, sleeve stitches right now. All right, so we're gonna pull that through. And because I have a puppy in my house that loves to pull on my yarn, I'm just gonna knot the very end of that waist yarn. And I'm going to take that marker off because we don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna make sure that all of this is out of the way. And 
And then I'm just gonna start knitting again and I'm gonna knit across to the other raglan marker. So I will meet you back here in a moment. All right, so we're coming up to our next raglan marker, our sleeves. going to knit right up to that marker. All right, so we're going to remove that marker. We're going to do our four stitch cast on and remember that number is going to be different depending on the size that you are you are um using. So one and two and this is um, my half so I'm going to put another beginning of round because the reason we're doing a stitch marker here in between those cast on stitches is because that is going to be your new beginning of round when you do your sleeve so that's really important. And one and two Perfect. All right, so I just thread the needle and now I am ready to put these um, stitch our sleeve stitches on hold. And again, you're gonna do the purl and it's just the stitches in between those raglan markers that I showed you before. So we're going to put these stitches on hold on, these, on this waist yarn here. And the other reason we um, cast on those four stitches for this particular size is um, that just gives us a little extra room when we go to knit the front and the back in the round when we connect again to do the body. All right, we're almost, almost there. There we go. And we can remove that marker pull our needle through like that and like I said I have a puppy <laughs> likes to pull my yarn out so I'm just gonna do a knot and there we go our sleeve stitches are on hold so we can go ahead and start knitting again And you'll find that the stitches are a little bit loose and there might be a gap, the armhole gap, <laughs> but um, I wouldn't worry about it because what you can do later is um, you can either seam it closed or what I like to do, and I didn't add this into the pattern because I was afraid that it could be confusing because I'm a little bit different, but I like to cast on or um, pull up rather, um, not cast on, but like pull pull up a stitch in the uh, extra stitches in the armhole, and then I just knit them together to make it a little bit tighter. Um, I might have to change my my uh, cord here because I am making a small little baby um, pullover for my friend's baby. She told me she was pregnant, so. That's what I'm doing for my Claudia pullover. I made the pattern really teeny tiny um, just for her. So, and then I can also do this tutorial with you and we can do the knit along, which I'm very excited about. So after you have divided for your sleeves, you're going to do two rows of your main color and then we're gonna switch to our contrasting color. And you're gonna do four row rounds, sorry, four rounds of your contrasting color and eight rounds of your main color. And you're just gonna keep on alternating that until you get to the hem. Um, and make sure because I left the I left the pattern open so you can de decide how long you want your your pullover to be. So um, just make sure that you're not getting to. You're going to end with the full multiples of your um, of your going back and forth colors, your contrasting and your main color. Okay, and then you can start your hem. So, but it is really important 
after you've connected and divided for your sleeves and you are doing your first full body round to do two of your main and then we're gonna do four and that is true for your sleeves as well so when you go to um uh, pick up stitches for your sleeve. You're gonna do you're gonna pick up your stitches and then you're gonna do two rounds of your main and then your contrasting color, and then you're gonna go back and forth for four for your contrasting and eight for your main. Okay, so I wanted to make sure to include that because um I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a solid sweater or um the stripe, but I wanted to make sure that you knew how to do the stripe for the, the Claudia pullover the way that the pattern was intended. All right, so I've just gone past my uh, round two marker and I'm gonna knit up to that next, um, that under arm um, stitch marker that we put in when we did our cast on. So this is my sleeve right there. And I'm going to knit right up to that stitch marker and then we are gonna add our contrasting color. The reason I do that there and not you know um at my beginning of a round is because it hides things <laughs> so if you are someone that likes to carry your yarn which i am a i like to carry my yarn i do not enjoy weaving in four million ends <laughs> and because i'm going back and forth with the color i just carry it so each to their own there is no right and wrong way regardless of what people say <laughs> Um, I choose to carry the yarn. So because I carry the yarn, um, you can see a little bit of the color that I'm not using being wrapped around my yarn as I knit, right? So where I've added it on. So um, that's why I just said, like that's why I like to go to the first um, underarm uh, beginning of round marker. So again just under where we put our stitches on hold for the sleeve and we place that marker that's where i'm going to add in my new color and i'm going to do that each time i need to do my color change so i'm going to knit up to that marker and then i'm going to slip that marker and then i'm going to add in my new color leave a tail so you can weave in that tail later and I'm just going to start knitting with that color and pull it through and what I like to do is just while I am just while I am knitting and I will take the knot out later but I just I just put um, just a single knot in there nothing crazy I'm not gonna double knot it or anything but I don't like it going anywhere so I'm going to drop my main color now and I'm gonna work with my contrasting color and we are just going to start knitting with it and with this contrasting color we're gonna do four rounds and each time we come to where we added that color in um, we're gonna carry the brown or the contrasting or the sorry the main color up to the next round with a contrasting color so and that's a preference like you can cut your yarn if you don't want to carry it just cut it and you will have we or ends to weave in which is not a big deal but I really don't like weaving in ends so yeah that's me <laughs> But, um, but if you want, if you don't mind weaving in ends, then by all means, you can cut your main color, use your contrasting color, and every time you do your color change, you can just cut it if that's what you wanna do, so. But then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knit all the way around. Oh my goodness, look at what I just did. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh, go back. And that's knitting. <laughs> Sometimes you're just going to have things happen and that just happened. So on video, nonetheless, but it happens. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'm just gonna go back. And if you do that, actually, I could show you. So if you do make a mistake like I just did um, and you have to go, you have to backtrack on yourself, make sure that you're 
picking up the first leg of your stitch. Okay? And then your stitch will be on the right, right leg to knit it so it won't twist on you. I think I just picked up the, actually that's a good lesson, eh? Because it happens. All right, we're almost back here. Okay, so that's the first one. So we're going to make sure that it, we're not knitting our tail. <laughs> Okay, we've got the proper end and we're gonna start again and we're gonna knit with that contrasting color. Make sure that you don't knit your tail like I just did. <laughs> but it's a good lesson, right? See, now that um, because I picked up the, the front leg of that stitch that I had to backtrack on, your stitches are in the right way. So if you're, I'm gonna show you a twisted stitch quick. So if you had accidentally put that stitch on the back way. Do you see how it's twisted? It's crossed over itself and that's what you don't want. So you have to make sure that it opens up like that. And um, I'll try to see, that's not twisted. Then you can knit with it. So look at all of the extra tips you're getting. And you just keep on going with your contrast color and I'm going to do four rounds of the contrast color and then I'm going to swap it for my main color. I'm gonna do eight rounds of my main color, and then I'm gonna continue in that fashion until we get to the hem. But just make sure that um, when, you, when you swap, if you are carrying your yarn, and then you're not cutting it, you're carrying it, your contrast color, your main color, what have you, um, that you're twisting the yarn over itself, like you're crossing, your two colors and uh, then there won't be a gap or that it won't look disconnected somehow you know I can't I can't describe it very well but um, you're just gonna want to make sure that you cross your yarn um, when you are changing colors if you are carrying it which I carry it because like I said I don't enjoy weaving it ends but if you are if you are cutting it and you don't mind weaving it ends then um, I think you should still actually cross your yarn but you slip that arm the underarm stick or uh, place marker you just keep on going but yeah and I'm almost to my main round marker there. And I like to keep a notebook handy nearby so I can keep track of what row I'm on. I just like pen and paper myself. There's um, row counters, digital row counters, but I, I don't, I'm just a paper, I, I have to physically have it. So I'm a paper and pen girl. And we're almost at that beginning of round, the, our main beginning of round marker, which means I can mark off this first round of contrast color. I'm gonna do that right now. And just continue on as we, we knit. I just think this sweater is just easy and it's fun. I really enjoyed making this. I've knit this a couple of times now. So, including one for the make-along. This is actually the one for the make-along. This is the tutorial video that I'm gonna include with my cal ladies that have joined. So I just wanna get back to this marker and I just wanted to show you quick what I mean. Okay, so we're almost back to where we swapped our color under the armpit there, the armhole. And we're going to slip that marker like so. All right, and then if you were going to swap your color here, you would take your main color and bring it up so it crosses our contrasting color, drop the contrasting color and start knitting with our main color. So that's how you would carry your yarn if you were carrying it. If you are cutting it, then it would be different, but we're gonna continue on with our main color here. 
All right, so we've gotten to that portion of the pattern where we need to do the hem of our sweater. And in order to start that, we're gonna change our needles to the 3.5 millimeter or whatever size that you wanna do your, your hem with, your ribbing with. And um, I've already actually started, but then I remembered I had to do the tutorial. So our, our um, beginning of round is in the front here, but I never do um, pattern changes or color changes in the front. I, I want to hide them underneath the armpit here. So I always do my color changes and my pattern changes underneath the armpit to kind of hide that change if there's any jog or anything like that. So I like to do that and I've carried my yarn for the color changes, like I said, you don't have to do that. You can cut it and restart, whatever you want. I just don't like leaving in the ends. <laughs> so that's what I like to do. But I've already gone ahead and I've cut my contrast color and I've done, I've started my one by one ribbing. So it's knit, purl, knit, purl. And we're gonna continue in that pattern sequence for about 12 rounds and then you're gonna bind off using the Jenny stretchy bind off. And then after we are done that, we've bound off, we've knitted our hem, off. then we're gonna pick up stitches and we're going to work on the sleeve together. So um, I've already actually started this, but um, so I've already done my knit and I've changed my needles and I've done my first knit here. So this is a purl. And then a knit and then a purl and we're just going to continue in this way all the way around until we have 12 rounds of this pattern all right so i'm at the bottom of the hem here and i'm ready to bind off and we're going to use jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off and this is how i do it in um, pattern because right now we have a one by one ribbing so this is what i'm going to do this is the way that i do it i know there's probably other ways or whatever but this is the way that i'm going to do it for this pattern here um, okay so the first thing we're going to do we're going to knit that first stitch and then because our next stitch is a purl stitch, we're gonna wrap, instead of wrapping a yarn over like a knit, we're gonna wrap it to the front to the back because we're gonna go in for a purl stitch. Wrap it like that. Oops, there we go. And now we have three stitches on our needle there. So you're gonna take the yarn over and that knit stitch there and pull it over the purl stitch that we just finished. And we did our first bind off. All right, so now we're going to yarn over in the front, or sorry, in the back, because the next stitch is a, a knit stitch. So we're gonna wrap it to the back to the front, go in for our knit stitch. And now that we have three stitches here, we're gonna take our yarn over and our purl stitch there. Last two stitches and we're going to pull it over that knit stitch that we just completed. And there we go. So again, what we're gonna do, because this is a purl stitch, we're gonna wrap it from the front to the back and go in for our purl stitch. And now we have three stitches. So we're gonna take those first, those last two rather, and pull it over like that. And that, that's our bind off. So again, I'll show you one more time. So you're gonna wrap it to the back because this is a knit stitch and knit it like normal. And then yarn over, or I mean, sorry, <laughs> bind off those two stitches like that. Okay, so this is a purl stitch coming up. So we're gonna wrap it to the front to the back and go into purl like you normally would. And again, we have three stitches. We're gonna take that yarn over and that knit stitch and pull it over that purl stitch we just completed. And we're just gonna continue doing this. So remember if it's a knit stitch, you wrap it to the back to the front. If it's a purl stitch, you go to the front to the back, okay? So we're gonna go in and knit this. And we're just gonna continue in this way all the way around our work. All right, so we've got the body all done and the hem is nicely 
and bound off. It's looking really cute. It's starting to look like a little suit or a little sweater here. And now I'm going to pick up the stitches for the sleeves and we're gonna do a couple increases around the armhole area. And simply what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go in with our needle. Um, you can use uh, double pointed needles. I'm gonna use my little um, shorty chai goose. I love these for sleeves, but um, if you have double pointed needles, then that's what you're gonna wanna do. So you're just gonna start picking up those stitches that are on your waist yarn, like so. go all the way around and then when we get to the other side um at the arm at the arm or the um armpit uh we are going to pick up some stitches to bridge that gap in between there oh my puppy's mad he's in the background i just put him in his kennel so i don't have to worry about him but you'll probably hear him in the background <laughs> So we're just gonna continue picking up the stitches here. And there we go, we've picked up all of the stitches. And now depending on what your, um, your pattern tells you to do, there's gonna be a different amount of stitches that you're going to pick up in here. And what I like to do um, to avoid that armhole gap, there's several ways. So, and I don't include this in the pattern because everyone has a different method, but my method for um, picking up is pick up as many stitches as you want so you don't have an armhole gap. And then you, what you do um, on the second round is just um, knit those two together so that you have the right amount of sleeve stitches um, for your decreases and such. So I'm going to go grab my puppy and I will be right back. All right, before we do any casting on or picking up stitches, we're just gonna pull this out of here like that. And now we have transferred all of our stitches to our needles and we're going to join our yarn and um, we're going to pick up stitches. So depending on the size that you are making, it's going to be different for everyone. But um, like I said, you can pick up extra stitches in here if you feel that there's too much of a gap. Just make sure that you're when you knit the second round that you uh, knit two stitches together how, however many times that you've added extra stitches. So. Um, just make sure that you have the recommended number of stitches to start your armhole knitting. So um, we are going to go ahead and pick up some stitches in here. My pattern calls for um, picking up four stitches, but I know that that's not going to be quite enough because I don't want that armhole gap. So I am going to pick up more than that. So I've got one, two... I'm just gonna pull this a little bit tighter. Two, three, four. And that's how many would be recommended for this particular pattern size, but I still have that gap, right? So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna pick up more. So five, so one, two, three, four and five so i've got five extra stitches that i have to decrease on the next round so i'm going to knit i'm going to knit together um five stitches so i can get rid of those stitches there and now i can join for working in the round so i'm just going to start knitting like normal and just pay attention because sometimes the way that we load the stitches they might be twisted so um just pay attention to that so if you have a you noticed your your stitch on here is twisted just go through the back loop for the first round and that'll correct the twist in the stitch so when i come back around to here i'm going to make sure that i've i'm decreasing some stitches on either side So 
so far my stitches are not none of them have been twisted but it does happen so we're just perfectly fine just make sure that you knit those twisted ones to the back loop and um, you'll be styling okay so And like I said, if you don't want to pick up extra stitches and knit, knit them together, what you can do is just sew your armhole gap um, up later, which is totally, you can totally do that too. And it looks flawless. So either way, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you don't have a big gap is what we're kind of going for here. All right, I think I'm just about there. I pick up this stitch I should have marked it so I do like to mark my stitches so this is where my last um, my raglan sleeve increases were so yeah so this is where I did my um, my joining of my yarn so I'm going to count these stitches and make sure I know where I want to um, knit two together and then we're going to play a, play some marker for the center of the armhole all right so I need four stitches for the underneath and I've had or I've uh, picked up um, like five stitches so I have nine stitches actually total but five extra so I need to knit together um, a few stitches here so I end up with four stitches total for my pickup so I'm gonna knit these two together so that's one Two, three, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, three, and then four, four, I'm going to knit these two together as well. And I should have the proper amount. So now you're going to go and you're going to do your stitch count and make sure, oops, sorry. You're going to go and you're going to make sure that you have the right amount of stitches if you did um, pick up more than the recommended amount. So I ended up picking, um, picking up an extra five stitches because I, I wanted to avoid that armhole gap. So I've knit some stitches together. So I'm back on track for having four pickup stitches, but that number is gonna be different depending on the pattern size that you're making. So now we want to grab a lockable stitch marker and we're going to place it in the center of the stitches so we know where the center is. <laughs> All right, so I've gone ahead and I've counted all my stitches to make sure that I have the proper amount to start our sleeve. And I've placed my marker at the beginning of a round for underneath, so this will be the armpit area. And we're going, we've are going. we already done one round, right? So we're gonna do one more round, and then we're going to add in our um, contrast color. And we're gonna do this for four rounds, and then we're going to change it and do our main color for eight rounds. And we're just gonna continue with that color sequence. And you're gonna follow the pattern um, for um, how many stitches that you need for the rest of the sleeve, because they do decrease and i will be back when we do our color change all right so we've gotten to that marker and we're ready to change our color so we're going to add in our contrast color and always give yourself a bit of a tail so you can weave in that later and i like to cross my my threads underneath my strands underneath all right, and then we can begin 
with this color here. I'm just gonna tighten that up in the back and I like to um, secure it just for now with the with just a single knot just to kind of give me a peace of mind. Um, you can take it out after when you do your weave in but I just like to have it. This makes me feel a little bit more secure. <laughs> And we're going to carry on in this fashion with this color for four rounds. And I mean, follow your pattern, like if it's calling for decreases or anything, depending on, I mean, you were not going to have decreases right now, um, so close to the arm, but um, down the sleeve you will. So, and it'll be different for every size. So, yeah, I'm just going to continue doing knitting with our contrast color for four rounds. And then we're going to switch back to our main color and knit that for eight rounds. So, and then while you're, you know, um, doing your color pattern, you're also going to follow the pattern for your decreases as well. So this arm, the sleeves on the Claudia does require you to have decreases. So just pay attention to that and you'll be fine. So we're almost on our first round with our contrast color here. And another trick that I learned when I was doing my sleeves and um, such is like to, um, to help with that armhole gap is um, pick up and knit the tail of your, of your yarn into um, the pattern as well or into your the main body so we're gonna do that we're gonna try that because I forgot that when I added the brown but it does help with um, um, bulking up that your arm which is kind of ha handy so I'm gonna take the tail of that of our contrast color make sure that our brown is dropped and I'm just going to knit a few stitches with both. But when you come back around, make sure that you treat this as if it was one stitch and not two stitches. So just be careful of that as well. So if you want to do that, you don't have to. You can drop that tail and just leave it the way it is if you want. But make sure that you're not, you know, you're not knitting it as um, uh, two stitches, right? You want to make sure that you're knitting it as one stitch but I find that it just kind of, you can't really tell anyway, but especially under the armpit, it's totally fine. And it actually helps bulk up your, bulk up that armhole that you might get. So I'm gonna drop that tail now and just keep knitting around. And when you go to do your decreases, for the sleeve, you're always going to do them where your marker is underneath. So when you do your decreases, you're going to knit two together on each side of this marker underneath your armhole. Every time it tells you to decrease, um, that's what you're going to do. All right. So I will meet you back for our first decrease in a moment. All right. So I wanted to show you how to do a decrease a decrease round. When we get to a round that says that we have to make a decrease on either side of the marker, we're going to start out this round with a decrease and we're going to end with a decrease. So we're going to knit two together and we're just going to knit all the way around until we get to two stitches before our marker and then we're going to knit those two together. <laughs> We have one more stitch and then we're going to knit these two together and that round of decreases are done. We're going to slip that marker and continue stitching or continue knitting. Or actually, you know what? I'm going to twist that yarn so I can bring it up when I go to change. And you only need to twist the yarn if you are carrying it. But yeah, that's how you do it. All right, so now that we have completed knitting our sleeves for our Claudia sweater, sorry, the, 
video is bouncing around a little bit. Um, we are going to knit our neckband or collar. And this is gonna be a folded collar. So we will go over those steps as well. But a good rule of thumb is um, we're gonna start with the right sides facing with our four millimeter needles at the back left a raglan. So right here is where we're gonna start picking up. And we're gonna pick up one stitch for every row along here. And then um, along the raglan or the sleeve. And then for the slope edges, we're gonna pick up um, three stitches or three rows, three stitches for every four rows. And then we're gonna pick up one stitch um, for every row along here. All right, and that's true for most um, raglan sleeve sweaters and cardigans is the sloped of it edges al always get three stitches for every four rows and then one stitch along the back and the sleeves. All right, so we're gonna grab the main color. I mean, if you wanted to spice it up, you could use your contrast color as well. And we're gonna leave a tail and we're gonna start at the back of the raglan sleeve here, right here. And we're gonna start picking up stitches. There are two ways to pick up stitches. And I think some of it is based on your personal preference. So I'm gonna do my personal preference, even though um, they do say to go into, here, I'll hold it up so you can see. Um, when you pick up stitches, what you're supposed to do is, do you see the V of that stitch? Well, you would pick up a stitch, um, you would pick up yarn through that V of your stitch. But what I prefer to do is actually go in between these um, rows and pick up stitches that way. So that's my per personal preference. That's how I'm going to do it for the video. But um, you do you. <laughs> and whatever you feel is right for you or the, the, the look that you like to achieve is what you should do. So I'm gonna pick up my first stitch here, pull it down a little bit, tighten it up, and I'm just gonna pick up a stitch for every row along the back of the pullover. the point where the slope is happening right here so we're gonna go one two and then we're going to skip one and then pick up on the fourth so that is um, three stitches for four rows we're gonna do that again because we're still on the slope of the neck so I picked up two and we're gonna skip one, go into the fourth. And we're almost done that slope. There's a little bit more slope before we start the beginning here. Skip this last one. Make sure we're going through the... All right, and now we can pick up for every row again for the front of the work. <laughs> at that raglan sleeve again. Now one, two, and then skip one. Sometimes if they're hard to find, just take your time. We're 
almost done picking up stitches. Don't like that there. You remember you pick up, the only time you do that one, two, skip, four, sequence is on the slope of the neck. Everywhere else you're picking up one stitch for every row all the way around and we're almost, almost there. Picked. We have picked up stitches for the collar and we're ready to rock and roll. All right, so I'm gonna pull that tighter. And now we can start working with the one by one ribbing. And we're gonna do one by one ribbing all the way around for eight rows. And then we're gonna fold that collar and um, we're going to sew on the inside. And I will show you that as well. So we can start, oh, and remember, because, because of the way that the stitches are mounted on our needle, we might have to, if you don't want twisted stitches, the first knit stitch is going to be through that back loop and for every knit stitch around. And that will correct the mount, the way that your yarn is mounted on your needle so your stitches aren't, um, aren't twisted. So you're going to see me knit the first couple of stitches um, with the tail as well. And I just like to secure it that way. So I've knit three stitches with the tail and I'm gonna drop the tail and kind of tuck it in so I don't accidentally knit with it because I've done that lots. <laughs> and I can continue on with just my single strand. But when I get back here, I have to remember that these ones that I've knit with the tail as well, that counts as one stitch. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do my one by one ribbing and knit all the way around for eight rounds. Oh, we forgot. I almost forgot to um, place my marker, which I also do sometimes. <laughs> so I'm gonna place that quickly before I forget. And this is why I like having um, a lockable and regular stitch markers. So then I know I'm gonna just place it right here. And then when I, I go around again, I can use a different marker if I want, but that will be my beginning of round. So then I know how many um, rounds that I need to complete. All right, so I will meet you back here when I have completed my uh, one by one ribbing for my eight rows. All right, so I've knitted my one by one ribbing and I'm done my rows so I can remove that marker. And we are going to do Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. So we're going to knit that first stitch and then we're going to wrap the yarn around the needle from the back to the front. And I'm just gonna knit this next stitch. You can bind off in a pattern if you want, but I don't feel like it. So I'm just gonna do it this way. So now you're gonna take that, the second and last stitch and bring it over the first stitch like that. And that is your first bind off. So again, you're going to wrap it from front to back like that and knit the next stitch. And then take those two back stitches and bring them over the front stitch like that. And you continue that process all the way around and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I have one more stitch to bind off for my Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. And I wanted to show you something because you're probably freaking out, but don't. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So we're going to cut our yarn and we're gonna bind off this very last stitch. And I'll show all right, so I have my yarn all threaded in my needle, my tapestry needle and i'm going to go let's see if i can hold it up for you i'm going to go in through the back like so and watch this it's so cool Doo -doo. look at that this holds it down really nice and snug and then i'm just going to go in there again 
snug it up even a little bit more. And if you're still kind of wanting to snug it down even a little bit more, there we go, look at that. And then I'm gonna go through the back here and I can weave in my ends. All right, so at this stage, you can say that you're done and block your work. because This has not been blocked. That's why it looks a little bit wonky. So you can go ahead and block it or we can do a fold over collar that is called for in the pattern. And um, it just gives it a folded collar is nice because it gives it kind of more of a finished edge. And in this one, honestly, I should have um, done a few more rows for the folded collar, but we didn't, so that's fine for this particular size, I guess. Um, but so I'm gonna show you how to do the folded collar. So we're gonna fold it to the inside and stitch it. So you're gonna need some waste yarn and we're gonna start at the back on this corner here. And you're gonna fold it over and you're gonna make sure that you're matching your ribs to the to the the same rib on the inside. I hope you can see what I'm talking about here. So, um, so we're gonna fold it over and we're gonna make sure that these stitches line up. And what I find is helpful sometimes is using um, either quilting pins or even your your lockable stitch markers and just holding the collar in place so it's easier to work. But I'm just gonna show you a few stitches just to give you an idea of what we're doing here. So I like to start at the back rather than the um, sloped edge or even on the sleeve, just cause it's easier to line everything up, right? So we're going to roll that collar like so, and we're gonna look at the inside. So I like to line it up with the, um, the rib. So I'm gonna line up the top rib to the bottom of the rib. And I'm gonna make sure that they're lined up perfectly. And you're gonna wanna do that for each, um, each uh, section or each uh, row rather. So I can bring my yarn through. And give it a knot so you're not pulling it through by accident and we can um, weave in that tail later I just like to give it one knot and yeah we're just going to make sure that everything is lined up properly so we can always look at that rib and make sure that it's lined up really perfect and we can just start sewing it together You're just gonna make sure that your rib, um, your ribs are lined up perfectly. And you're just gonna continue this process all the way around and it just gives that folded collar look. So I'll meet you back when we're all done. All right, so I've gone ahead and I finished sewing down that folded collar. So it's nicely finished now and it's ready to be blocked. So your Claudia um, pullover pattern and your size is gonna look different than this because this size or this, this pattern, the version of this pattern has been downsized a lot. So it will look different, but yours will have a nice finished seam there and with the folded collar. And now we are ready to block this pullover and we'll be done. I just wish I could, um, I wish I could model this one for you, but I will, I will put in some pictures of what it looks like on my daughter and the pattern that you're making. So um, stay tuned for that. Bye.